Ningal Aba, I am Jessalyn. Let's dive into what's new in DevTools in Chrome 101. First up, the recorder panel now supports import and export the user flow as a JSON file. This new addition makes it easier for you to share user flows with others and can be really useful for bug reporting. For example, my friend Adam sent me his JSON recording file. To open it, simply click on the import button and select the file. Yay! Now we have the user flow populated in the panel. We can click on the replay button to replay it or audit the user flow with the measure performance button. Aha! Uh -huh. Adam ordered the wrong coffee here. It should be a mocha instead of a cappuccino. Let's update the step by using the selector picker to pick the mocha. Nice! The selectors are now updated and we can export it as a JSON file and share it back with Adam. Optionally, you can export the user flow as a Puppeteer replace script as well. Now, you might be wondering what are the differences between the Puppeteer script and the Puppeteer replace script. Let's export both scripts and compare them side by side. When exporting to the Puppeteer script, all the steps are converted into JavaScript and you can replay with the Puppeteer library. On the other hand, Puppeteer Replay is a new library that built on top of the Puppeteer. In a Puppeteer Replay script, the steps remain as a JSON object. This results in a much shorter file, and you can replay that with the Puppeteer Replay library. Not only that, you can use the Puppeteer Replay library as a command. Say you downloaded your user flow as a JSON file, you can run this command by parsing in the file, then click Enter to replay the script. You can learn more about the Puppeteer Replay library with this link here. These new export options are useful for you to manage, customize, or even integrate the script with your CI CD pipeline. Next, you can now view the layer add rules in the Styles pane. The alias layer is used for declaring cascade layers. What are cascade layers and why do we need them? Well, first of all, not all projects need cascade layers. It is useful for large code bases, design systems, and when managing third-party styles in applications. Cascade layers enable more explicit control of your CSS file to prevent style specificity conflicts. Take a look at my page here. I have an empty box with no color. Let's add some CSS to fill the box with color. In my code here, I added three layers, the page, the base, and the component. Each layer contains CSS rules to change the box color. Traditionally, without layers, the last CSS rules always wins. In this case, the box color would be hot pink. With layers, we can specify the layer order ourselves. For example, I want the base layer to have the lowest priority and the page layer has the higher priority. Look at our page now. Instead of hot pink, the box color is now in green. We can view the layer add rules and its styles in the Styles pane. Click on the layer name to view the layer's order. Let's try to disable the styles in the pages layer. The background color is now updated to pink because the component layer has a higher priority than the base. To learn more about real-world use cases with the cascade layers, make sure you check out this blog post by Yuna. Next, you can now view and edit the HWB color format in DevTools. HWB stands for Hue, Whiteness, and Blackness. The hue can be anywhere within a range of 0 to 360. The other two arguments control how much white or black is mixed into that hue, up to 100%. It could be especially useful for creating monochrome color palettes. In the Styles pane, hold the Shift key and click on any color preview to change the color format. The HWB color format is added to the rotation. You can change the color format in the color picker as well. 
Here is a bonus tip. Use the command key to filter multiple network requests. Let's start by clicking on the CSS type to filter the list by CSS. Now, what if you want to view the image request as well? Hold the command key or the control key for Windows and Linux and click on the image type. You can view both the requests in the list now. Do the same if you want to view the fonts as well. All right, there are more new features covered in my blog post. And as usual, the link is in the video description. Thanks for watching. See you in four weeks for Chrome 102. Ciao.